Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with episode 2048. 2048 today is going to all be about five immune system suppressants. And I'm actually going to take you through each one of these and let you really decide for yourself if it's something you want to keep in your life because you may not want to remove it. These are common everyday things that a lot of people use. But also, I want to take you down a little story, down a little path that you might begin to think to yourself by the end of the episode, what is really going on in the world today. I am someone that likes to look at things just from a 30,000 foot view. I like to step out of myself because if I don't step out of myself, then I am full pitta and I am ready to go. I wanna run through the wall, like all of those things. So I say, okay, what am I missing here? What is really going on? Let me step back from my own point of view, my own beliefs and just say, all right, what's the truth? I'm always after the truth. Uh, if you're as part of our Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, you understand that it's all about peeling away the onion. And same for any health-based issue, weight issue, aging issue, is you have to, you can't just say, oh, well, you just need to go on a low-carb diet. That's not going to solve your issue. Trust me. You might lose some weight for the first couple months. You might feel a little bit better for a couple months, but you're going to relapse. There's no doubt about it because a low-carb diet is just the diet part of a de-stress protocol, right? Okay. So what do we do? Well, we peel back another layer. We go, oh, you don't need to be on a low carb diet. You actually just need to fix all of your gut dysbiosis because you have bacterial overgrowth and you have candida overgrowth. Okay, well, let's work on that. And then you don't need the low carb diet. Okay, good. So we have one more layer. Now, why'd you get the SIBO in the first place? Oh, you also have H. pylori. You've got a lot of stress. Okay, yeah, let's work on that too. Why did you get the H. pylori in the first place? And you can, so what I'm saying is I'm going to take you through the whole thing today, but it's about asking why. And it's about peeling back the layer. And so what I I ask of you is this, when you listen to the media, and honestly, it doesn't matter to me what side of the media that you listen to, I really don't, honestly, that doesn't matter too much for me, all media, you have to understand, is not looking out for your best interest. Their best interests are selling advertising dollars and making their shareholders money. These are not nonprofit organizations that are like to our benefit. And even nonprofit organizations, by the way, if you knew all the back-end schemes they have going on, would blow your mind. Uh, I'm just learning about this now, but I'd be careful of, you know, nonprofits as well. Now there are many nonprofits that do amazing work, but when you start to hear about these uh, multi-millionaires and billionaires with their, uh, with their charities, you start to say, oh, okay, this is really a front. Got it. Okay, I see what's going on here. You're actually paying yourself out of your own charity and only a small amount is going to the charity. It's very, very underhanded. Not a huge advocate of that because there are a lot of people out there suffering and they really could use the help. And so uh, I believe they do deserve the help. But what I'm saying here is right now, you know, I've said this before and, and I'll, I'll keep saying it. I have no problem continuing to say it, but I can't talk on the topic of the virus anymore. And many of you know why. I been censored. I was censored previously. I finally got back to being able for my posts to show up on Instagram for other people. And listen, I get it. People want me to, you know, go to battle with all of the powers that be. They understand that how I look at things is literally, okay, these are the benefits of doing this. And then these are the cons of doing this. I'm not all in on one side because I share with you the truth, like the real truth. Some people are getting sick. This is happening. Some people don't have to be as worried. That's a real thing as well. Like we really know uh, when you look at all of the different statistics and you look at now it was 2.6, uh, for comorbidities. Now it's 4.0. The average person that dies from this particular virus has four comorbidities. Now, should we not take care of those people? Of course we should. The average age of death is 79 to 80 years old. Okay. The average human lifespan in the U S is 74 to 77 years old. Now, does that mean we shouldn't protect our 79 and 80-year-olds? No, we should, but it's also even past current life expectancy. So again, we have to look at that. Then we look at all 600 plus total deaths from this particular virus, and then we look at it and we say, okay, 5%, this is by the way the US government says, 5% of those people out of all 600,000, that's about 30,000 people, 30,000 people died uh, because of no comorbidities, nothing else. They didn't have any comorbidities, at least that we know of. So now we're looking at that. But again, I can't even say those things, even though I just said them, uh, because when you speak the truth, 
and you're trying to help all people, it doesn't necessarily work out. So again, I believe in protecting the people with two or even one comorbidity or more, right? I believe that. We should do that. I've talked about that many, many times. Protect those people, right? But I also believe that we're not really telling the public the truth. And that's where it gets me. Like, I'm all for protecting people. I'm all for keeping people alive. Of course. I mean, that's, that's my job. My job isn't just to keep people alive. That's what conventional medicine does. My job is to help people thrive. That's what I do. That's what I want to help people with. That's what my team does. That's what integrative health practitioners do. That's what it's all about. But now here's the issue I see. I see not only allowance, but promotion of five immunosuppressants. And I'm just trying to figure things out here because we're going hard in the paint, as they say, in one area. But now we're not talking about how do we maybe lift some comorbidities and not make things worse for anybody? Why can't we have both? Why can't we talk about both? Is that not okay? Why can't we do that? So I'm going to go through five with you here today. The first one I've talked about before, and it's alcohol. Now, I'm not saying you can't drink alcohol. I drink alcohol. So again, I'm always very honest with you. How often do I drink alcohol? Maybe two, maybe three days out of the month. Now, you might say, well, that's not enough for me. Uh, listen, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But look at all my Friday Review research. Two to three drinks per week after that becomes a serious health-based issue in terms of cancer, um, liver, and many other issues. Okay, So I just want you to, the, the stats are there. Now, you may ha never have an issue with that. But keep in mind, alcohol is inflammatory. It slows liver detoxification, and it can lead to cardiovascular issues, vascular issues, uh, liver issues that I just spoke about, um, as well as immune system issues. It's an immunosuppressant. So we just have to understand, if you're drinking alcohol, like people get on a flight and they drink quite a bit of alcohol. Now, I understand some people are very anxious, and that allows them to calm their body. Listen, I get it. I understand. I'm not even saying not to do it. I just want the truth to be spoken. That's it. Alcohol is an immunosuppressant. So you're flying up in the air. You're breathing in all the recycled air, which they say is perfectly clean. Let's, let's be careful with saying perfectly clean because they're also coming in there and spraying bleach, literally, uh, and, and other um, toxic fumes into the plane. But again, this is neither here nor there. Uh, we're talking about alcohol. Alcohol, while you're breathing in all of that, you're suppressing your immune system. So now you're much more likely, potentially, to get sick. So alcohol, immunosuppressant, number one. Best thing you can do if you enjoy alcohol, pick one day a week, have a couple drinks. Have it with friends, have it with family, enjoy yourself. I'm not saying you can't do it, but if you're feeling run down and you're putting yourself in a higher risk situation where you know viruses and things might be around, maybe don't drink alcohol. Just something to think about. That's all. Again, I'm not telling you to do not to do any of these things, but just think about them. Number two is this: processed and inflammatory foods. So where is all of the information that processed foods, Processed carbohydrates, hydrogenated fats and oils, and grain-fed um, meats and beef and all of these different things that we have and, and farm-raised fish are causing massive inflammation in our body. People say, well, that has no correlation with the immune system. Well, let, let's just look at this for a second. High blood pressure, high cholesterol and heart disease, type 2 diabetes and obesity are predominantly lifestyle-based diseases. Now, again... I'm not coming down on anyone for having those things because they absolutely have not been taught. Just like I wasn't taught as a kid, just like my parents weren't taught as kids. Who's going to teach anybody any of these things? There's no schools teaching these things. The media is not going to teach you. They're like, oh, no, go on and have your you know, fake meat or your grain-fed beef or whatever it is. It, it's like 10 to 20 times the omega-6s, which are, which are inflammatory, Okay. So when we look at this, we're saying, okay, so now we're spiking blood sugar after meals, okay? We're filling up our insulin receptors with the hydrogenated fats and oils, and then it's leading to what? Type 2 diabetes, inflammation in our body, and most people that end up with type 2 diabetes also end up with high cholesterol or heart disease, and vice versa, and then they end up with high blood pressure. This is not a surprise. Like, this is how the human body works, because you think that you can just palliate symptoms with a medication, when the medication, all it does is mask one thing, moves the pathway to another way that the inflammation has to come out. So next thing you know, your entire body's inflamed and you have autoimmune issues, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. And we're like, well, where did all this come from? Well, here's where it came from. 
the way that we eat, the way that we live. People might say, well, people are living longer today. Well, they're living longer today because we're able to keep people alive longer today. That's it. But people are already on medications in their 40s and they stay on them for the rest of their life. All right. Let's keep that in mind. And it starts with processed and inflammatory foods. You might say to yourself, well, uh, I can't eat uh, all organic. It's not all, it's not eating all organic. That's not even what it's about. It's actually eating an anti-inflammatory based diet. And I have a couple, uh, what I call my whiteboard series videos, and I'm going to link those up for you today. So please, uh, head on over to stephencabralcom forward slash 2048. I'm going to link that up for you. All right. Number three is this. I'm not going to say too much on it. Cigarettes, smoking, vaping, breathing smoke into your lungs. Okay. So no matter, I've got a lot of people saying, well, what about smoking this? What about smoking this? There's very little, very little that I could say, well, every once in a while, that's not as bad, right? Every once in a while, not as bad. Like there's some, um, indigenous herbs to Native American people that they've used before, like mulain is one of them breathing and that's good for the lungs. But I mean, again, do we need to do that? No, not really. Not really. Like we can take that in as an herb. So people like to nuance everything and I get it. And it's actually, it's a, it's a good way to do it. But when you breathe smoke into your lungs, especially when it's not even pure tobacco, it's all of the elements within the filter of the cigarette or all of the chemicals that they're giving to kids with vaping, pretending like it's not harmful because it's not cigarettes. You are creating massive amounts of inflammation in your lungs, which is not good in terms of your immune system. You have a 4,000% chance, greater chance of getting cancer if you smoke. And the chances go up hundreds of X times as well for high blood pressure and and high cholesterol. And that is because of inflammation, right? You breathe something in your lungs. How does that affect your arteries in your heart, right? Or the rest of your body for your vascular system for blood pressure? Well, how does that happen? It, inflammation is not localized to your lungs. You breathe that in, it's creating free radical damage in your entire body after time. So if, you, if you're smoking right now, don't do that right? Don't do that. You can use ingestibles. If you like CBD or THC or uh, whatever it is, you can take something that you uh, ingest rather than smoke into your lungs. Smoke is a carcinogen. We don't want to breathe that in smoke, no matter what it's from. Fire, candles, anything. It's a carcinogen. Now, I'm not saying you can't use candles, but again, keep your windows open. It, it does actually matter. Now, that's a smaller degree. Breathing cigarettes is to a much greater degree. They all matter though. All right. Number four is this. This one blows my mind. We know that exercise helps to modulate the immune system. I just did a podcast on this, and that's episode 2036. If you want to check that out, that's stephencabral.com forward slash 2036. Uh, when, you, when you push your body too hard in anything, it weakens the immune system. No doubt about that. All right, I talk about that, but I don't think anybody is, well, I shouldn't say anybody. There are a certain, yes, class of people, segment of people that are just going way too hard in life. No doubt about it. It's a form of stress. It's for them, they might think it's stress release, but it's certainly stressful in the body. Okay, but let's just talk about this in general. If the majority of people exercised, they'd be so much less dis-ease today because even if they were eating some processed carbohydrates or their alcohol, they'd be able to process it better. Because exercise helps with that. Exercise is going to help you sleep better at night. It's going to better modulate inflammation in your immune system. Here's what I don't understand. I'm going to get to this in just a moment. When we close gyms, wellness studios, personal training studios, Pilates studios, boxing studios, any studio or gym that allows people to work out, exercise, and stay healthy... We are potentially allowing those people then to fall off the wagon, as they say, and gain more weight, which automatically increases inflammation. I have a question on that one. Don't quite understand that. Do I agree and do I understand that there is a spread of a virus that is airborne? 100% I agree with it. That is absolutely 100% true. And what most people don't understand is the six feet distance, I've spoken about this before, means absolutely nothing. And luckily, everything that I've said before, again, on my shows has been proven true because it's just scientific research. People are like, oh, follow the science. Like, listen, you're not like people are not following the science. It's airborne. It stays in the air for about 31 minutes. If I walk from point A to point B in two minutes, it's still in the air over there. It doesn't matter if I'm six feet apart or not. 
So then you can say, okay, wear masks. Okay, I get it. I've done a bunch of shows on masks. I'm not going to get into that today. It's not that I don't believe in them. They do work, but not all masks work, right? And again, this is not binary. If you pull a bandana up over your mouth, a nose, or a gator, it's not the same as a K or a N95 mask. It's just not. <laughs> again, like look at the signs of those. So it matters. But what I'm saying is this. So we can do that. We, we, we close our gyms, helping people stay healthy, right? Reducing all of the top causes of mortality, boosting the immune system. So we close that because for fear of spread, which I get it, but then we keep open all other stores, right? Essential stores. I'll get to those in a minute. Like your alcohol store, you're just selling alcohol. That's allowed to stay open, but yet the gym isn't. Even if you're just, you know, stay, you're going to be stay six feet apart, which they could do, right? Just like an alcohol store. Interesting. And if people start talking about sweat, <laughs> we're not talking about the same thing anymore, right? Not the way that it works. All right. And the fifth one is this, and then I'll pull it all together. Suppression. This is a, this isn't a, this is about the immune system. Suppression of inflammation, suppression of information about nutraceuticals, which are vitamins and minerals and other products that have been studied by peer-reviewed scientist published in peer-reviewed research that shows these things boost the immune system. Okay? Clinically proven vitamin D. Clinically proven zinc. Clin clinically proven licorice root extract. Clinically proven quercetin. Clinically proven all your B vitamins. Clinically proven omega-3s, right? Like these things are clinically proven. That's it. We're not saying that it's going to prevent anything. But what we are saying is it's going to help boost our immune system or it's going to keep our immune system healthy is a better way to say it. So I just want to be clear. I'm not saying that if you take certain vitamins and minerals and exercise, you won't get a particular virus. You very well may. You will. What I'm saying is your symptoms are going to be most likely radically less if you are healthy. You will have it for a few days. You might even have it for a week. And then you will get well. That, that is how the human body originally was made. Now, Again, do we have other toxins in our environment? 100%. Do you sometimes not know even some comorbidities or factors that are inside you? Yeah, you may not. Like that part is true. I agree with that. And are there certain people that are far more susceptible? 100%. And then are there outliers at 0.03% of the population or less that may get very severe symptoms and they appear very healthy? There are. 100%. There, but I mean, we could go down the line for so many different things. So what I'm saying is viruses are real, right? All of this we have to be worried about, but what can we really do? What we can really do is this <clears throat> as individuals, we can do our very best to boost our immune systems. And then you can take any other measures that you feel are best for you and your family. And there are multiple measures that you can take. And you should decide if that is best for you. That is the smartest thing for you to do. But what doesn't make sense, and it leads me to believe that there may be more to this than we really know right now. And again, I don't know, but I've been told certain things. And I was told about origins of the virus this a year ago. But would I ever bring that out? Of course, I would never. Because again, I verify first. I can't verify. I don't say anything. It may not be true, right? So I'm not going to verify that. I'm not going to say that. But what I can tell you is this. You have essential workers working at alcohol stores and uh, all sorts of other places, you know, whatever it might be, your, your local uh, market that mainly sells cigarettes and different things like that. Again, I go to local markets as well, and I buy a lot of my natural health foods there and all that. But let's just keep in mind, they're not all the same. So if we're allowing people to go to purchase alcohol at an alcohol only store and they're considered an essential worker, well, what happened to our essential workers in our wellness centers, right? What happened to our essential workers keeping people well in yoga studios for de-stressing or personal trainers or gyms? What about that whole industry of health where they're looking to keep people healthy, that's just what I'm a little bit more not understanding. When you can't go to see your health professional, but yet you're not only allowed, you're welcome to, and even promoted to go to do all those pickups. That's what I'm just, I'm, I'm confused about that because when we move our body, we move our lymphatic system, helps with drainage. 
We move our uh, white blood cells throughout our body, right? The heat even helps to kill viruses when you do something like a sauna, right? It helps us keep the extra weight off, which helps to keep inflammation at bay. So when I look at all of the different laws and things like that being made, I start to question, what do we really do here? Because if it were me and I was at the top of this agenda, I would be telling people, these things are immunosuppressants. These are the things that you can do to boost your immune system. Please do the best you can to remove these immunosuppressants. Please do the best you can to boost these immune boosters. And we're going to do everything we can to take precautions inside of gyms and training studios and yoga studios, et cetera, to keep people safe and healthy. But yes, continue to move your body. We're not going to make you be the last ones to open during all these different protocols. But here's the thing, just like anything else, I just want to be someone that tries to share both sides with you. I believe in everything, to be honest with you. It's just not everybody fits into one particular group. And we try to get everybody to fit in our group. We have to be understanding not everybody's in the same group, right? Not everybody has three, two, three, four comorbidities. Not everybody is 80 years old, right? And we also have the people, not everybody likes to exercise, right? Not everybody wants to eat healthy. I get it. I understand. Let, let people be and make the best decisions for them right? That's, that's really what this is all about. And as I always say, do your own research. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody. Listen to five, 10, 15 people, read articles on both sides, not just reinforce your cognitive bias, right? Just don't read more of what you already believe. Read the other side. What are they saying? Keep an open mind. Maybe they change your mind. Maybe they don't, but at least you kept yourself open. And also you might have a little bit of empathy as well for whatever the other side is. Again, I don't have a side. I'm here in the middle doing my very best to bring both groups together, to allow them to see the other side to allow them to understand that we as humans are different. We're not all the same. Imagine if we were all the same. And also just, just be a little bit leery that no matter what you do, there are things that you can do to boost your immune system, but nobody's telling you that, right? And also that this isn't going away anytime soon, right? Nothing we will do will make this go away anytime soon. I even talked about that at the very beginning of the pandemic, being an airborne-based virus, what's what's called animal reservoirs. It just means that it can be carried on by animals as well as humans. So that's not to scare you at all. It's to say, we need to take care of ourselves. We also need to take care of each other. And we can't always allow policy and all that to get in the way of being human and to allow us to connect with other humans, even if they don't have the same viewpoint and understand that we're all susceptible. We really are no matter what you do. So let's have empathy for the path that each person uh, decides to take. So my goal was to simply say, whenever possible, do your own research, decide what is best for you and your family, and then also don't always believe everything you're being told. There's sometimes an agenda behind certain things. Remember, politicians are just regular people. They weren't appointed by anybody higher than them, right? They were supposedly appointed by us, but they don't always have our best interests in mind because they're paid millions of dollars, especially once they leave office, to send the boards of big companies like pharmaceutical companies. So these things are all true. And again, you can do your own research. Do I dislike you know, governments and all that? No, I don't. But do I think that they don't always have the best agenda for all of the people? I do. And that's why I just have to make sure that you and I are looking out for each other, that we're sticking up for each other, and that we're also respecting each other's point of view. So um, that is going to be basically my last topic on uh, the whole pandemic going on here today. I know people want me to speak more on it. I understand. I'm here to support you, but that is not going to be my specific role. My role is to help people, no matter what they're suffering from, begin to heal. That's it. And I'm not going to be a lightning rod for one particular side or the other to use me as other people have used other people to say, hey, look at this person saying this. You need to believe it. No, you don't need to believe. 
You don't need to believe anything. What I want you to do is simply open your mind to possibility. There are many possibilities out there. Begin to see the other point's point of view, be, yeah, and then hopefully you'll allow them to see your point of view. And even if you don't agree, well, at the end of the day, you can agree to disagree and still be fellow human beings. Thank you so much for hearing me out today. I appreciate you. And uh, of course, for any links here today, anything that I spoke about, you can head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2048. Have a great day.